Welcome to Watch Chat, where we chat about watches and other facts of life. Here are 12 reasons why I think this is better than a Submariner. To the majority, the Rolex Yardmaster has always been the underdog to the Rolex Submariner, and for the longest time, I failed to understand why. To scratch that itch and to understand why the dislike, I've decided to pull the trigger and got this beauty this year. After having to own it and spend some time comparing it with my Submariners, I finally understood why, and the answer is a simple one. The majority just got it wrong. Jokes aside, here is my view of this watch, the 12 reasons why I think this is better than a Submariner, and why I chose this color instead of the Rhodium Tiffany. In 1992, Rolex introduced the Yardmaster design with the intention of replacing the Submariner. The idea was to make the Submariner more luxurious, more robust, and a more modern looking watch. Basically, it was meant to be a better watch in every sense. Despite the great admiration Rolex has over the new design, when the time came to commit to the course, Rolex was petrified as to how the public would react to the change. Hence, the Submariner design was maintained. Without wanting to let go of such a masterpiece, Rolex decided to call it the Yardmaster, hoping to appeal to aristocrat who owns yachts and perhaps to indicate that the Yardmaster will always be one sea level above the Submariner. Hence, the use of precious metal and the difference in price. More about that later. This is the 116622 model with a sunburst dial that Rolex calls it the bright blue dial. I call this my Popeye. Whilst this may not be the latest version, it is still relatively similar to the latest Yardmaster. This has a measurement of 40mm in diameter, 11.4mm thickness and 47.3mm from luck to luck. The case is made out of 904L stainless steel. Apart from the intermediate section of the case between the 20mm lug width that has brush finishing, the rest of the case are all polished finish. The surface and shape on the case resembles those of a Rolex Daytona, definitely giving it a more upmarket feel. There are no holes on the lugs. The Oyster Design bracelet has a three-piece link with the centerpiece being polished and the outer links being brushed. The side of the links are polished as well with screw pins for easy removal of the links for size adjustment. The Oyster Claps has a double locking mechanism. To open it, you must first lift the clamshell and then lift the lift lock contraption. Underneath the claps, there are also three divots to position the bracelet with the claps for size adjustment. It doesn't end there. This also has the Rolex Easy Link that allows you to extend and contract 5mm of the bracelet. Underneath the closed case bag is the in house 3135 caliber automatic movement, which has an accuracy of plus minus 2 seconds a day, 28,800 bph. 31 joules, hacking seconds function, for the 8 hours of power reserve, it is fitted with a parachrome hairspring, giving it a greater shock and temperature resistance, and it is cost certified. Tucked in between those elegant crown guards is a sizable screw down crown with a crown and three dots embossed on it, signifying that it has a trip lock triple waterproofness system. Be that as it may, Rolex says that it only has a conservative 100 meter of water resistance, as opposed to a 300 meter in a Submariner. But does that really matter? Let's be honest here. I don't think anyone will be taking Mr. Popeye here for a dive. The bezel here is made out of platinum with media blast internally with raised polished numerals, giving it a great feel when you run your fingers over it. I find the notches on the bezel to be shinier than those on the Submariner, perhaps due to the material used. The bezel is bidirectional and when you rotate it, you won't hear the 120 clicks. 
The hands and markers are all made out of white gold with lume on them. The date at the 3 o'clock is vividly shown underneath this Cyclops Sapphire Crystal, which doesn't have AR coating. The date, of course, has a white backdrop with black numberings. When you pull the crown out to position 1, you can change the date instantly. At position 2, the date changes instantly at a stroke of midnight. The words and minute track printed on the dial are all in white save for the pop of red on the word Yardmaster. The lollipop second hand also has a pop of red, giving it a very vibrant feel. For those who've been following my channel, you heard me talk about how I wanted a Yachi in a Rhodium dial. However, after having the opportunity to compare them side by side and since I already have a Rhodium dial Wimbledon, I went with the blue because I figured it's probably the more iconic Yachi between the two as it has a more sailor emanation. Now, here are my 12 reasons why I think this is better than a Submariner. Reason number 1. It is the feel of the watch. The Yachi was intended to replace the Submariner. Hence, it is designed to be a more superior watch compared to the Submariner. And it definitely feels that way. Reason number 2. It is the case. The smoother surface and shape of the case gives it a more refined and elegant look. Reason number 3 is that bracelet. Unlike the Submariner bracelet that has brushed surfaces, the polished links on the bracelet exhumes elegance and class. Reason number 4 is the use of Easy Link instead of a Glide Lock extension system. I understand the need of having a glide lock system if you wear the Rolex over a wetsuit or a winter jacket. However, for an everyday use, the Easy Link is an easier mechanism and is more practical and useful especially when the days are hot when the wrist tends to swell up. Reason number 5 is the use of a platinum bezel as opposed to a ceramic bezel. The use of a precious metal definitely makes it more luxurious looking. Reason number 6 is the raised polished numerals which also helps to give it more blink making it even more luxurious than the Submariner. Reason number 7 is the use of a more robust and consistent font on the bezel that looks more symmetrical than the fonts used on the Submariner. The 2, 3 and 5 on the Submariner all ends with a curve or a tick in each stroke. Consequently, you would expect the font on the one to be wearing a cap in the Submariner. However, it doesn't. The Yardmaster on the other hand has a cap, making it look consistent with the other numerals on the bezel. Reason number 8. The bidirectional bezel makes it easier for one to use it to time your everyday ordinary activity. Reason number 9 is the use of a coloured sunburst dial which beautifully reflects light making it a more interesting design compared to any of the glossy black dial on a Submariner. Reason number 10 is the use of colour on the second hand and the printing of the word Yardmaster. This definitely adds a spark and gives it a different aura. Reason number 11 the three lines printing on the dial also makes it less cluttered as opposed to the four lines on a Submariner. Last but not least, reason number 12 is about the size of the watch. Comparing it with the latest Submariner, the Yardmaster is 0.6mm thinner and 0.3mm shorter, making it even easier to slide in those tight calf shirts. Having said that, the Yardmaster is not all bed of roses. It's got its flaws as well. For example, the lack of a loom pip on the bezel means you can't read the bezel in the dark. The chunky robust numerals on the bezel reduces space thereby only allowing 3 minute markers instead of 4 to be shown in every 5 minute intervals. This makes it harder to read the timer and one would need to guess if it is 2 minutes, 9, 10 or 11 minutes when reading the timer. The price could also be a deterring factor. In 2022, the Yardmaster is priced at 48,050 ringgit, whereas the Submariner date is priced at 39,450 ringgit, forcing people to look at cheaper options.
Anyway, these are just my views. Let me know what you think about the Yardmaster and which version would you prefer. If you like this kind of video, please like, share, comment, subscribe and hit that notification icon to support me and I'll really appreciate it and promise to make more videos like this. Until the next one, thank you for watching.